the first Muslim Senator Fatima Payman. Today quit Labor, the party that got her elected, and she'll now sit as an independent for now. And Australian politics just got more dangerous. The ongoing genocide in Gaza is a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. It is a crisis that pieces the heart and soul, witnessing our government's indifference to the greatest injustice of our times makes me question the direction the party is taking. Sadly, I do not believe our principles align with those of the leadership of the Labor Party. With a heavy heart, but a clear conscience, I announce my resignation from the Australian Labor Party. OK, now some of Payman's colleagues claim she told them her decisions on backing Palestine above Labor, etc., they were guided by God or Allah, and that she, or that she left it in God's hands. Well, today she didn't deny that when asked about that, but she got huffy and said, no, 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 it's a question of humanity. Can you elaborate, Senator, on what the suggestion that you were being guided by God in your, your decision making, and were you campaigned on sort of other Islamic Muslim type of issues? I don't know how to respond to that question without feeling offended or insulted that just because I'm a visibly Muslim woman that I would only care about Muslim issues. This is this topic on Palestinian recognition, but Palestinian liberation is a matter that has impacted everyone with a conscience. It is a matter that's not just a Jewish versus Muslim issue. This is a matter about humanity. Well, I worry about Payman's decisions for several reasons and not sure, I'm not sure I believe at all some of the things she said in a press conference today, explaining why she couldn't follow Labor's rules, had to leave. Now, the rules, of course, say, Labor's rules, that its MPs have to vote as they collectively decide. You can't rat and vote your own way, which Payman did by voting with the Greens for the immediate recognition of a Palestinian state. And that's the big issue here, why she's leaving. And let me go through my problems with what Payman has done and said. Now, first, her preaching of victimhood today. You know, no one knows victimhood like a Muslim, a Muslim woman, this Muslim woman, a refugee from Afghanistan. Unlike my colleagues, I know how it feels to be on the receiving end of injustice. My family did not flee from a war-torn country to come here as refugees for me to remain silent when I see atrocities inflicted on innocent people. Well, that's nonsense because plenty of politicians understand victimhood. They've known domestic violence, some of them. They've known poverty. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese was the son of a single mother on benefits. Others have been refugees themselves, independent daily for a start. And I don't trust their other claim to victimhood. What is this victimhood Olympics? Her claims of being bullied by wicked Labour Again, her claims weren't convincing. You just listen to this whinging, a list of examples so trivial. The intimidation has been in many fronts, uh, just in general, when it comes to, you know, being escorted to the Prime Minister's office, uh, you know, almost on show for everyone to see what was happening, because I received many uh, messages from people that shouldn't have known what was going on. Um, or senators making it very clear that they didn't want to sit next to me in um, the chamber, uh, or in instances where there were stand-up tactics of wanting to push me towards and invading that space that I had, um, and also just controlling and constantly pushing me for an answer. Oh, cry me a river. In fact, I don't buy Payman's great cause either that a refugee who escaped from Islamist extremism should now demand the recognition of a Palestinian state. When Palestine right now is run by more Islamist extremists, how does that work? I mean, one half is run by Hamas, which actually started this war that upsets her by slaughtering 1,200 Jews on October 7. The other half of this Palestine is run by the Fatah group formed by terrorist Yasser Arafat. I mean... Those are the people who'd inevitably run this Palestinian state that Payman wants to recognise right now. Now, Australians should actually feel betrayed, not just Labor. Payman came here as a refugee. 
she now quits Labor on an issue that has nothing to do with Australian domestic politics, helping the poor, taking refugees, whatever. It's about a foreign war in which we have almost zero influence. And really, in effect, it's importing a foreign conflict into the country which offered her safety. Gee, thanks. And another thing I don't buy. Payment says this idea of voting with the Greens and against Labor, maybe even leaving Labor, all that, it came to her in the moment. Just in the moment. <laughs> oh, really? A lot of Labor MPs think it's been a, a month in the works. Because, you know, she actually admitted today she'd talked days earlier to Glenn Drury, the notorious preference whisperer, who advises minority political parties on how to win elections and is a man who could help a group called the Muslim Vote to get more Muslim people into Parliament. And Payman didn't give a convincing or consistent answer when asked if she would join the Muslim Vote or form a Muslim party herself. She admitted she'd actually met that group and her answers really were all over the shop. I've had a c conversation with community members from Sydney and I do know that they are, are willing to put independent candidates, but that's the extent of my conversation with them. At this stage, I do not plan to form a party um, and, you know, we'll stay tuned. Yeah, this is scary stuff because that group, the Muslim Vote, for instance, you look at its website. It judges Labor and Pizan on one issue only, not on the welfare policies or tax or education or health, just on one issue, just like payment now, support for Palestinians and whether they're against Israel. Nothing else, nothing. That's why it says, you know, don't vote for Employment Minister Tony Burke, for instance, even though he's been crawling for the Palestinian cause. Don't vote for Education Minister Jason Clare, who's in a seat where nearly 32% of voters are Muslim. Now, I ask you, what is going to become of our politics, our country, if we now have a political movement that makes its number one issue a stand on foreign wars that don't even involve us? Wars started by genocidal Islamist terrorists. What is that going to do to Australia? And this must also be a wake-up for Labor. Why on earth did it select this woman, just 29, now for the Senate? It was a diversity pick, obviously. And identity politics like that, we now see, is a dead end. And it must also learn that no matter how much it panders for the Muslim vote, no matter how much it slams Israel and boys have done that, it will never be enough, not to a payment. And all of us will now pay.